Hello everyone and welcome to Forever Olympics on Forever Sports. For today's daily wrap, which was supposed to be daily, but unfortunately yesterday with the British Nash Lions series and stuff like that, it's just been so hectic with trying to get everything out and everything sorted that unfortunately I missed yesterday, which is not a good way to start. So I really, really do apologize for dropping the ball on that one. But today, um, took a bit of a personal day. It's a lot of catching up on, on some of the Olympic events and stuff like that I missed and stuff like that. The last thing I want to do is jump on here and talk about things that I haven't watched or I haven't read about or I haven't made sure that I know exactly what is plotting. And even then, I don't really know what's plotting because unfortunately, it's a lot of discipline and stuff like that that you don't get to see on a day-to-day -day basis. But, you know, the summary of it is that, you know, Team South Africa really, really struggling on day one, but bounced back pretty nicely on day two. And it was so close to being what could have been such an amazing day um, for the Olympic team. Unfortunately, a couple of results not quite going our way towards the end. You know, particularly our men's football and men's hockey sides were looking really good today, but a very, very promising um, athlete, and we'll talk about her a little bit later, but Tatiana Schoolmarker is making waves over there in Tokyo. We're going to start with day one. So yesterday marks sort of the, the first day of the Olympics. I mean, I know we had our SA under-23s who had lost to Japan last week, Wednesday, but yesterday was um, day one, and it started with the men's cycling race, um, where, where Nicholas Lamini was leading the sort of the charge, really, and he was sort of our, not really a medal hope, but an outside charge, maybe, you know, the first black staff ever to do, um, to do the Tour de France, and he was up with the lead, um, the lead pack, so it wasn't quite sitting with the peloton, he was um, up ahead with the lead pack, up until about, I think it was about 65 kilometers, so he really was leading for quite a lot of time, and up there, and, and looking pretty comfortable, in the end, um, unfortunately, couldn't finish that race, as well as Ryan Gibbons, who also recorded a DNF, but Stefan Debod, um did manage to finish, he finished in 52nd, um, with a time of 6 hours and 16 minutes, I cannot think of anything worse than being on a bicycle for 16 hours, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things I just cannot do. I can't cycle. I'm such a, such a poor cyclist. So I've got nothing for admiration and respect for these guys because, I mean, it just, you can just see it. And they're talking about it's probably one of the hardest Olympic courses ever done. But I was watching this for, I was actually watching it quite a long, a bit. Um, and it's, it's, you can just see it was grueling. It was very, very hot. You know, lots of uphills, very tricky course. And you could see it was taking their toll on a lot of the athletes. So, so congratulations to Stefan Debot for finishing. Nicholas Domini, a nice damn Olympic debut. Looked pretty, looked pretty good. Um, the rowing, which is something that we've sort of looked quite good in the previous years, has not gone particularly well. It started with our men's pair, Lutefan and Jake Green, who finished fifth in the heat, of, heat one, and then it finished fourth in the Repage, um number one. And then our men's four of Lawrence Britton, Carl Shunby, John Smith, and Sandra Torrento finished sixth in heat one and sixth in Repage. Um, one as well. So they are, are no longer in contention for a medal. So no medals coming from our rowers um, with, from those two this Olympics. And then in terms of ju um, judo, um, Jerona Whiteboy unfortunately went out in the first round, which was the round of 32 in the 48kg judo. She lost out to the Argentinian Paolo Pereta, who um, eventually made on to actually make the quarterfinals. So I suppose no sort of, at least it wasn't the case of you going out and then the person that you lost goes out the next round. You know, at least she did sort of go quite far. And then our hockey, our men's hockey returned to the Olympics for the first time in a long time um, with a 3-1 loss against Team Great Britain. Rusty Pizza, who's been a veteran in that um, side for so many years, very, very impressive performer is Rusty Pizza. Um, you know, getting on in years, but looking as sharp as ever. He made seven saves um, in that game. Um, Matthew Guys brown was the only one who found the net for um, our hockey boys. And then... Uh, we also had uh, water polo yesterday where our women lost 29-4 against Spain. Um, it's the first time that we've ever had an Olympic side. Um, go, uh, um, or it's the first time we've ever had a women's water polo side at the Olympics. So, you know, for them, it's, 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 the, the fact, it's, it's more the fact that they're there. They're qualified and they got over there. So, you know, I think we uh, don't look at their, their, their results too harshly. We, 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 when we spoke about them in, the, um, in our preview, we talked about the fact that their their average age I think was twenty two point one years old. So you know it's 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 a big ask for a lot of these girls. And I mean you think that somebody like um, uh, Jordan Vederburn who scored the two goals, she's eighteen years old. I mean eighteen years old and she's making the Olympics. I could barely make a first team when I was when I was eighteen. Um, but she's over there, you know, taking names and scoring goals. So very big, big congratulations to them. Um, but yeah, not 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 the sort of not the not the way they would have wanted to start um, things. In terms of the hockey as well, moving back to hockey, the women lost two 0 against Ireland. Um, Pumela Banda, who was our flag bearer on Friday in the opening ceremony, she made seven um, saves as well. So also looking very very strong there. Unfortunately, not managing to find a goal from a woman there. So as I said, it was a, it was a frustrating first day. You know, a big loss in the water polo. Um, you know, three one two 0 So not 
So the close results in the hockey, but you know, probably I mean, we would have liked to have done a little bit better. Look, we're also not as best to do particularly well in hockey, but you never know. Um, the rowing probably the the, the the sort of the most frustrating. And then in the pool yesterday, we had two athletes, Erin Gallagher, the 22 years old. She came eighth in the women's hundred meter butterfly in, in her heat. Well, Michael Hurley, 21 years old, came eighth in his men's hundred meter breaststroke. That was in heat four. So it was a frustrating day yesterday. We didn't really sort of put ourselves on the map yesterday. It did seem South Africa. Um, but today was a much, much better um, performance. It started off on a bit of a bad note. Brandon Valjara coming 18th out of 20 across the main street prelims and um, the, the straight street skateboarding. The first time they've ever had street skateboarding. And he was one of our, he was our first ever representative to represent. So I suppose that's a, bit, that's a piece of history. You know, the first South African skater or skateboarder ever to represent us at Olympics. In the, in the surfing, um, in terms of making waves, quite literally, Bianca Bates placed fourth in Heat 2 and advanced to Round 2, where she then came second. As a result, she has moved into Round 3. Um, so, still still going live as Bianca Bates um, was surfing quite well, looking quite good. Um, sticking to some of the, the aquatic nature of things, our water polo men's side got their campaign underway today, where they lost 21-2. Timothy Resselman and Ross Stone were the two goal scorers. Um, that was against Italy. So, yeah, not, not, not a good start for the, for the World Polo teams. But, you know, it, I think you got the, the, the most exciting thing today was, was, was two things. It was our men's football side and our men's hockey side, who were so close to, to creating a bit of history and, and making, you know, massive, massive statements. Our men's football side, in the end, going down 4-3 against France. They literally led 1-0, 2-1, 3-2, 3-3. 3-3. Every single time they scored a goal, they would then concede it. Um, for France, Gignac scoring a hat-trick. So, I mean, that kind of shows you the quality that that the that, that French side had. And But very frustrating that, you know, we couldn't capitalize on the goals from Tobeho McQuena, Everest Bakopa, and Kopamelo Kurisang. You know, it's, it's to score three goals against France, to go into the lead three times, and then not even draw but lose the game is is really, really heartbreaking. I mean, it, it is what it is for a South African fan, isn't it? You know? And because and, we saw another very similar performance in our men's hockey, who were 3-0 up against Netherlands, the third-ranked side in the world brilliant brilliant stuff from our, our men's hockey stuff our hockey boys in the first sort of first and second quarters uh, Mustafa Kasim, Abdul um, Dian Kasim, and Seven Cock all scoring very very nice goals um, and they just just couldn't couldn't stop the comeback from the Netherlands who eventually they came back to win 5-3 so that was very straight I mean if the football if we managed to hold on to the football and the hockey those would have been two results to have beaten France in football to have beaten Netherlands in the hockey would have been two massive massive results um, unfortunately that not going quite our way. There was also the women's uh, road race yesterday in the cycling. Ashley Mulman Passio came 14th in a time of 3.54. Unfortunately, Carver Holzer just recorded a DNF. Um, and, and then in the pool, a very, very good day in, in the pool for us because Tatiana Schoolmarker in the 100 meter women's breaststroke in heat five set a new Olympic record, a new Olympic record in the heats from somebody who we said was a medal hope. Um, she's, um, you know, really sort of breaking through golds in the Commonwealth Games a couple of years ago. She's still very young, you know, in there, about to reach her peak. Um, so a new Olympic record of 1, um, 0, 4, uh, 8, 2. But Lily King, the, the world record holder, is competing and, is, and they are in actually the semifinals together. They'll race together um, in the early hours of tomorrow morning. Um, in that second, in that semi-final. But look, I mean, Schumacher going all the way with a um, with a, with an Olympic record first up. You just, you've got to look at a medal hope, you know. Now it's the important thing is to follow up with a strong performance in the semi-final and and just sort of hold a little bit back and then go balls to the walls in that final and try and see what we can get. It'll be so so nice if you know, as as Cameron van den Berg, who was our breaststroke sort of pioneer, moves away. We suddenly now have Tatiana Schumacher, who's going to hopefully make some work. I mean, it looks really really talented. Um, that her and Lily King should be a really, really good race. You know, world record holder versus, and she broke Lily King's Olympic record. So, you know, I think there will be quite a nice little bit of a grudge battle going in between there. And then Peter Kutz, um, Kutzer, 17 years old, um, came eighth in his 100-meter backstroke um, in the fifth heat there. So unlucky for him. But, I mean, it's, as I said, 17 years old. Imagine being 17 years old in the pool at the Olympics. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't even finished school yet. This is the, sort of the quality of, of some of our athletes. And we've got so many youngsters over there. It's really, really exciting times for Olympics um, for Team South Africa because we've got a lot of youngsters. We're sending bigger teams. Hopefully, this is sort of a bit of a dawn. I think, you know, in, in Rio 6 2016, the fact that we got 10 medals was a really big sort of step in the right direction. And now, after that, we said we've got to send over bigger teams. We've got to, got to send big, bigger teams. You know, send as many people as we can because we, there are always going to be those performances. You know, Nicholas Dalamini, you know, if he had put in that performance like that, you know, we wouldn't, we might not have seen him in, in another, in the years gone by. 
Um, you know, our football I'm doing what they did in France. Now, men's hockey almost, you know, causing a huge, huge upset. So even if they didn't follow through, it's those moments that have been created because we're taking chance on more athletes. Um, and then in terms of your forecast, what you can look forward to tomorrow, day three of the official um, Olympics is the following. First of all, um, in surfing, Bianca Batenduck will be up against the Australian Stephanie Gilmore in round three um, of the women's surfing there. And then Tatiana Schoolmarker's 100-meter breaststroke semifinal will be taking place at 4 to 4 in the morning. So... I would really um, recommend waking up for that because just four minutes later, once she's already done that and hopefully into the final, the Rugby Sevens will kick off their campaign. They're up against Ireland in their first match. They have got two matches tomorrow. One is a little bit of a better time, but their first game will be at four o'clock in the morning. We've also got the men's triathlon, which actually starts tonight um, at 11 o'clock. Henry Schumann is the man to watch. Bronze in 2016. He's aiming for gold. Watch out for Alex Yee um, from Team Great Britain. He is being touted as the potential favorite. Um, to take away um, over from Brownlee. Um, there is also, there's, there's still um, another Brownlee in the setup. So whenever, whenever you see a Brownlee in triathlon, you know, they are royalty over there. So watch out for him. But Alex, he has been touted as the favorite for the triathlon. But Henry Schumann, look, he, he surprised us all in 2016. And he's, he's got one thing on his mind, and that is the big gold. So, you know, keen to see how he goes on there. If he wins gold, we will just, we will release a video right there. And it'll just be me uh, celebrating. Um, it could be our first sort of medal of the actual games. Um, and then we've got the men's mountain bike. We've got Alan Hathley, who won a Commonwealth bronze in 2018. He'll be involved in that. That will begin at, hop at, at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Hoppers 11, our women's hockey side will be up against Team Great Britain. 12 o'clock, our rugby sevens will be up against Kenya in the second of their group game. They've got a final group game, which will be on Tuesday. That will be against uh, the USA. And then, Hoppers 12, our golden boy, Chad Leclerc, will hit the pool. The men's 200-meter butterfly in Heat 5. It's both Chad Leclerc as well as Ethan Dupria, who is 18 years old. Um, and eight minutes later, in the women's 200-meter individual medley, we will see um, Rebecca Meadow in Heat 2, also 18 years old. So very, very excited to see how those two teenagers get um, along. This is what I'm saying. You know, the fact that they're getting that experience now means they can try and kick on. Next, I mean, that means next Olympics, they're, you know, 21 and then 25 and then 29. You know, these are people who can mount up four games before they're even, you know, 30. Um, so very keen to see how they go. Um, and then triathlon women tomorrow will be the last event to watch out for. It starts at half past 11. Simone Ackerman and Gillian Sanders are the two um, athletes we've got. Simone Ackerman, I think 34 years old and Gillian Sanders, I think 39. So lots and lots of experience between those two um, and experience, you know, triathlon is one of those things where you, you can do it for quite a long time. You know, it's not something that by the time you get to 25 or 26, you know, you're on the downslope. Um, you know, the, the distance events have always been dominated by sort of late 20s, early 30s. That's kind of where, you, where you're sitting in your peaks. Um, and, and having experience, as I said, experience is the biggest thing when it comes to endurance events. You know, it's not panic. It's to never not panic um, in those sort of situations. That is what your forecast is looking like. That's what we've happened in day one, two. I will please, I will endeavor to try and make sure we've got daily updates I want to try and get a couple of people on the channel this week as well, talking about some of the events and stuff like that. Um, you know, swimming is a big thing at the moment. Hopefully, some, a couple of maybe a couple of medals in the next couple of days. Uh, sevens is a big is a big one to watch. As I said the triathlon's a big one to watch. So after a, a slow start, you know, Team SA building up a little bit of momentum. You know, if we could just get that first couple of, of medals, you know, sometimes you know when you it's, it's it's just amazing how it's it's an individual thing, but we're all Team South Africa at the end of the day. And when you still get that first medal, I mean, we all watched the video of Team South Africa watching um, Wade for Nikuk when he broke the record. So it's just funny. We just need a couple of those people to sort of put in those big performances. And that sort of starts wrapping up and thinking, you know what? They did that. Why can't I do something special? So let's hope we start seeing that in the next couple of days. Please do smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. My name is Steven. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys in another Olympic update tomorrow.